Well, it's a crisp morning down here on the Murray River. We're out chasing big cod, and who does not love chasing big cod? Throughout today, I'm gonna to cast the snags, I'm gonna work the cliffs, I'm gonna share a few of my tips that I've learned over probably almost 20 years chasing these fish. I'm really looking forward to today. I just love, love fishing the river. Tangle, tangle. And you can sit there ready and fish with you. So I've done the 10 minute, 15 minute run this morning. There's this really good run of timber. And I reckon that's important, especially prime time in the mornings. If you've got log after log after log, your lure's gonna be swimming in the zone for longer. And I reckon that gives you the best chance at a big fish. So I really like a crankbait in the morning. I think there's every chance the fish are sitting up higher and sometimes with a spinnerbait it actually sinks below the fish. So early morning a crankbait's a really good option. So when I get that fish, I've got everything ready so I can make the whole process happen really quickly. Good set of pliers to get the hook out. In case you can't get that hook out quickly, I've got a um, set of cutters so I can just chop it if I need to be rather than damaging the fish. And I've got a set of gloves which is going to save my hands. Time for some sunglasses. It's funny, you wouldn't actually pick it, but good quality sunnies are really handy cod fishing because you can see the edges of the weed beds. You can see those little sticks under the surface. And there's been so many times where just those little sticks under the surface have produced a big fish for me. Yep, got him, got him, got him. That was an awesome bite. What a bite. Oh man, that is so cool. <laughs> oh, run right past the end of that stick and it just got walloped. That is awesome, check him out. That just goes to show you, if they get it on the bottom of their mouth or on the outside of their mouth, you're generally gonna catch them. Love on. Last thing I want is a shredded hand. Oh, pull the rod out of my hand. You can just wait there, fish. <laughs> Better keep the line tight. Scotty Gray would be like, dude, just sort out what you're trying to do. Come on, fish. In you come. Just try and get a grip on his lip. He is. Beautiful fish. How cool is he? He'd be, he might be in the 70s I reckon. Massive tail fitting, no wonder he hits so hard. The Dino 90, come up good. There he is. And one last look at him. Don't often get to spend much time with these fish. I do way more casting that I get to do admiring. I'm just gonna take a moment 
How awesome is that? Just glinting in the morning sun. All right, we'll send him on his way. Thanks, dude. Thanks for eating my lure. That was super cool. He splashed me right in the face. Might have noticed my lure mods made to the Dino 90. I love a black bib. Been colouring in or painting my bibs for 15 or more years now. And that allows you to fish a bit smaller lure, which is easier to work, but it gives it a much bigger profile. So I made the call last night, I knew we'd have this bit of a northerly breeze. We've got the current coming down this way, so we've got wind against, against current. And I find that that just allows you to drift nicely at a nice pace along the front of the snags. Um, if you have wind and current together, you tend to be pushed into the snags. It's very hard to manage the speed of your lures, and I don't think your fish is effective. How good does that look? There's got to be a cot on there. Yep, got him, got him, got him. Oh, oh, right in that timber. I just called it. I said, how good a spot is that? Two big old logs right so by, uh, side by side. And there was a fish just sitting perfectly in the middle. That is awesome, check him out. There he is. He might come off. Steady fish, be nice. It's such a good trick. So the fish comes by the boat and you've still got your heavy drag, just click it into free spool and then you can just thumb that line off because if it pulls really hard and it's right next to the boat, then chances are you rip the hooks out of his mouth. All right, I'm gonna pop a glove on, get a look at this fish. Look at him go, he's like a barramundi. Come here buddy, give us a look at you. Oh yeah! What a cracking fish. That is just beautiful. So check this out, it shows the importance of having really sharp hooks because he's just lightly pinned through that one treble. And if it wasn't super sharp, he might have missed it. What a stunning creature, check him out. Beautiful fish. Yep, all right. We'll send him on his way. Off you go, dude. <laughs> Crankbait, such just the perfect lure for the job. Ah, coffee break, I reckon. We're gonna get so many comments about where exactly it is I'm fishing. And I'll tell you the truth, it does not matter. I've caught big fish in lock one right through to lock 15. And the most important thing is the clarity of the water. So if you can find some good green clear water, you can catch a big fish. If the water's dirty, you can't catch a big fish. It changes every year. Um, and it's all about finding that clear water. And that is the most important thing. Location does not matter at all, but that clear water, that's the key. So if I'm cod fishing, I've got to have a pedal for my electric. If I've got a pedal, then my hands are free. They can work on casting and retrieving the lures and my feet can work on controlling the electric. So much easier. So I had a question the other day about what do I target when I go out and cast in the river? And it's pretty simple. Anything that looks good is worth the cast. So big logs, like you can guarantee there's gonna be one on that. Whether he's gonna eat or not, it's a different thing. But 
all the good spots along the cliffs. Pretty much, if it looks really good, it's got cover, it's got a bit of depth, there's a good chance it'll hold a fish at one point or another. So the depth of water that I'm targeting is anything from two to seven meters of water, seven, eight meters of water. I don't like fishing in 10 meters of water because I don't think you fish it effectively. But anything from two to seven meters of water is really good. always worth giving these sandbars a cast. You might have a bank on the other side that's deep and it's got lots of structure, but you'll find feeding fish just cruising along these sandbars. And this sort of territory is a sinking lure territory. So whether you're fishing a chatterbait or a big spinnerbait, you need something that's be able to sink to the bottom and then work up that sandbar. Well, that's the last of those good snags. And go right back to the start and fish it all again. So I'm back up working through these snags again. Did it all with the crankbait this morning, and now it's switched over to the big twin spin. Gonna work through it all again. Um, the fish are probably tucked under the snags a bit because the light's a bit higher now but I've had two cod bites today. I don't really care what happens because getting two bites down in this lower Murray is really hard to do, regardless of the size. So I'm just so happy. Got him. Oh, that is so awesome. Just knocked it right in front of that snag. Beautiful fish, check him out. Here he comes. That is wicked. How awesome is that? <laughs> There's nothing like getting a cod on the cast. That is super cool. There he is, pop that motor up, bring him across the weed. You come in here with me, dude, and hop in the water. Oh, how good are breathable waders to get a grip on this fish. A lot of hard work, a lot of casts go into them. Oh, and he came off just like that. <laughs> that sucks. All that time, all that effort. And I just wanted to get a look at my cod. All right. That's not exactly how I thought it was going to end, but it's so good, so good to finish on a fish like that. There is nothing, nothing like a cod bite, and I'm pretty stoked with that. Let's get back.